妈喜欢这个。Welcome to another edition of A Parsons Progress. Today, as many of you will know, it is Ash Wednesday, and uh, it will be celebrated across most of the Latin world. And many people tonight will be going after work to be ashed. They will receive the ashes of the burnt uh, Palm Sunday crosses on their forehead. I remember during COVID doing it by sprinkling ash on the top of the head. And we're a bit worried about getting COVID. I don't quite know what doing it on the, what it does. anyway. Uh, but some, it's quite an old tradition doing it on the top of the head. And uh, there's something rather nice about it. But most people will be ashed on the forehead. And the problem, of course, with putting the ashes on your top of your Swede is that uh, some people won't be able to then for demonstrate their piety on Facebook later you see. Uh, it's almost become a Ash Wednesday tradition to take a photo of your ashed forehead. There'll be lots of lovely signs of the cross uh, regaling us on our Facebook pages and Twitter uh, this evening. Not that I'm on Twitter uh, but I'm on Facebook and uh, it rather seems odd to me that uh, Despite our law's injunction not to be like the Pharisees and stand on the street corners parading our piety, uh, we rushed to our cameras to do a selfie with our uh, 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 ashes. Quite odd. Um, there we are. But who am I to judge, as the Pope would say? Um, not something I have ever done. And uh, I wouldn't advise it, which is going to annoy most of the people probably watching this video. who have probably already uploaded a picture of their recently ashed forehead. I'm not sure what it achieves. I suppose in its defence you could say it's encouraging people uh, to enter into the period of, uh, of Lent and fasting. Um, anyway, that's between them and their conscience. But it's fasting I want to talk about today. Uh, because we enter into uh, the period of Lent in order amongst other things, to pray, uh, and also to fast. And fasting is a very interesting concept. Um, fasting in the Latin church has almost become an embarrassment, frankly. Uh, very little of it is done, and even the injunctions to fast during the period of Lent requires nothing very much at all, really. Uh, and people talk about giving up chocolate and or something, or... And there is even a new sort of, almost a Vatican II injunction by some bishops conferences to sort of not give up things for Lent, but take something on. Hmm. So that's quite interesting. But for most people, uh, I'm sure a lot of serious Catholics will make an attempt to fast um, in so much as they're able. And they will probably give up some treats or other. Uh, to make life slightly more difficult. And it's this concept of making life slightly more difficult that I want to address, because that is really the basis of uh, fasting, in a sense. We know it's important. When Jesus came across particularly difficult demons, he would say, ah, now you see, this lot can only be cast out by prayer and fasting. 
Fasting goes back a long way and it's very important. It's such a sad reflection on the modern Latin church that uh, fasting has become almost comedic in its lack of rigour where people have a slap up fish and chip supper on a Friday night or lobster thermidor in place of meat. That's if they fast at all on a Friday. Now, I want to juxtapose that with a very rigorous system of fasting, which you might find amongst Eastern Christians, where they almost fast, practically some of them, for half of the year. In the Eastern Orthodox Church, there are lots of fasts uh, and you could end up fasting anything from between 180 days to 200 days or more uh, depending on how rigorous you are as a orthodox layman there is of course the great lent which equates with the latin lent there's the lent uh, before christmas which we call advent there is the apostles fast uh, there is the fast leading up to the dormition what the latin church would call the assumption these are big and long fasts, uh, and they're quite rigorous. Uh, and one is not left to one's own devices to give up chocolate or take on chocolate or take up this or take up or give up whatever. The law ha of the Orthodox Church has quite strict uh, guidelines. And they are only guidelines, because at the end of the day, only you know if you're cheating. And only you know if your uh, intentions but the guidelines are nonetheless there and nonetheless quite difficult. Uh, I would imagine if one was to uh, completely uh, embrace them. And for the Orthodox, therefore, not only have you got these long fasting periods, uh, one is asked to fast on Wednesdays because that is the day that our Lord was betrayed and also the crucifixion on the Friday. And so you, an Orthodox Christian might routinely, therefore, on those two days, uh, give up not only meat, but olive oil, cheese, dairy, this sort of thing. Uh, and that's more or less week in, week out. Um, uh, quite different, therefore, in its approach. Now, what is the point of all of this? And why do I mention the two? Well, apart from the glaring embarrassment, as I say, between the two traditions, um, the whole point of fasting, really, is what we might call an attempt at asceticism. Not a word you hear very much. We usually assume asceticism is something to do with crazy monks in the desert and that are a little bit extreme. Uh, but asceticism is a fabulous word in the Greek which has as its roots training. It's really something to do with, more to do with athletics than religion in a way. Uh, and fasting is a form of training, but obviously for the Christian, it is a form of spiritual training. And it's not only um, Christians who embrace that form of asceticism, but also the Stoics did as well. And they had no real belief in Christ as such, uh, but they believed in asceticism. But they did it for totally different reasons than the Christian. You see, the Stoics would have uh, embraced asceticism in terms of what they would call self-mastery. In other words, don't let food govern your life. Don't let your belly be your God. Uh, other forms of carnality. Don't be given to too much drink. Um, there are lots of ways in which they would try to master these appetites uh, in order not so much to grow into the journey into the heart of God, but uh, self-mastery. Because through self-mastery, you can increase your personal virtue and get stuff done. And in a sense, that's why I uh, posted my thumbnail of me having a shower. I hope it was fairly discreet. It seemed to be just my shoulders. Uh, you'd see more of me on a beach uh, before any rad trads get all exercised by the fact that the priest is in a shower. Um, and the reason I showed it was because um, I like to have a uh, daily ice cold shower and uh, I do it not as part of my fast that is an ascetic practice but because in terms of self-mastery one finds if you can do uh, that type of difficult thing in small things you can often do greater things when it is demanded of you and our Lord said something similar didn't he, he said if you can't be faithful you know and obedient in small things how on earth am I going to be able to trust you with some big things 
So I do it for that. I don't do it as a part of religious observance. In fact, there's scientific proof that it does you good to do things you don't want to do. Uh, and that may be a number of things um, that you don't want to do. You don't want to fill in your tax forms. I hate admin. Do you hate admin? I hate admin. Can't abide it. Have you ever had to done? Have you ever had to do a, a a means test? It's a nightmare, isn't it? Thank you, Purdy. Purdy just rattled her ears. She's a lovely dog. She she saves all this up for when I'm videoing. Yes, and now she's talking to me because she knows I'm talking about her. So, yes, I've lost my train now. Asceticism. <clears throat> um, now there is some scientific proof that doing things we don't want to do. Um, actually does one good, uh, purely in a physical sense. It's called the anterior metringulate cortex. It's the middle of your brain. And this gets enlarged whenever you do something you don't want to do. So whenever I have a cold shower, for example, this enlarges it. And with it, it enlarges one's ability to control one's will, to exercise one's will over life self-mastery if if you like so the more stuff you don't do or don't want to do and you do it this gets larger and it has shown to uh, affect one's longevity in life one's general health and also um other things you know you you, you start to be an achiever you, you set out goals and you can do them you'll get you get used to doing these things that you don't want to do. So although having a cold shower every morning seems absolutely pointless and difficult and uncomfortable, there are some benefits. I mean, one of the things it produces is uh, what they call brown fat. I mean, I've got plenty of the ordinary stuff, but it pr provides you with some good fat, which is the brown fat. But I don't really want to talk about um, scientific matters. It's more the spiritual I wish to address today. So you've got the Stoics, the into self-mastery, but of course, the church traditionally has always been into asceticism also for this form of spiritual training. But we don't do it for uh, self-mastery. We do it more for uh, a journey into the heart of God. Theosis, if you like, becoming like God, divinized, um, moving away from carnality, moving away from uh, venerating that which is just comfortable and pleasurable uh, and feels good, towards that which is more difficult and beneficial spiritually in creating virtue uh, in that uh, manner. So there are positive fruits from one's fasting. One doesn't fast just to grit your teeth and bear it and hate it and just pray for the whole darn thing to be over so that you can eat lots of lamb on Easter day. Uh, that's not the point. <laughs> that might be one of the side benefits. But there must be, to enter into Lent, a proper disposition, which would be to absolutely embrace, embrace the difficulty, take delight in the difficulty, see yourself as somebody who is training, you're an athlete, you know, athletes, Olymp Olympians who train uh, to do marvellous things in the Olympics go through enormous rigours and self-sacrifice and discipline and have to deny themselves in order to get that gold medal. And, you know, Christians, it's no different. So we must embrace it uh, with alacrity rather than, oh, no, it's Ash Wednesday. Ah, oh, gosh, I've got weeks and weeks now of boring food. It's awful, but I'll grit and bear it for the sake of our Lord. That's not the right attitude. So really, this video is just a short video to encourage you um, in doing that, uh, which is difficult. Uh, you will feel physical benefits. You'll feel spiritual benefits and you will increase your pilgrimage and the quality of that journey into the heart of God uh, by doing so. Our Lord was a great faster, the apostles were a great faster, the church traditionally has always uh, believed in fasting. It's good for you. And so I won't talk any more about that really, I just wanted to uh, briefly uh, mention uh, the importance of it as a as a discipline and to encourage you to do so in this period of Lent. Um, and some of you may be tuning in because you want to know what on earth going on with my hermitage down in uh, Shropshire. Um, well, the truth is, I've not really been down there very much. Um, 
The weather's been appalling over the last month or so. It's done nothing but rain, and it's nothing but sludge and mud down there, and there was nothing really I could do. Um, number of reasons. I've got to save me pennies up for various jobs that need doing. One of the jobs that uh, I've become most acutely aware of is I've got to get those trees down that are around the cottage. This is surrounded by great tall trees, every one of them threatening to pulverise this cottage. Um, so that's priorities over new roofs, windows, this, that and the other. Got to get all those trees down. Well, I mean, there's an upshot to it all because I've got, I will never probably have to pay another uh, heating bill in my life. I got that much tonnage in luggage that um, it will keep it will see my time out. Let's put it that way. So um, that's a priority. And that is why I haven't really shot anything down there. I'm hoping to go down possibly next week. Certainly by March, I want some of those trees down and I will video it all uh, and bring you some footage. Uh, which should be fun, basically. Bring a lot of light in. You know, um, I've been told by the locals who remember it from 80 years ago, um, f some 50 years, some 40 years ago, but some can remember it 80 years ago. Can you believe it? Um, where it used to have all sorts of lovely flowers growing up all over the place. And, uh, of course, no light's getting to it because of all these trees. So nothing's really growing around the cottage, but it used to be beautiful, apparently. Um, so it'd be nice to see all that happening again. And the other thing is, of course, if you've got fireplaces, which I have, uh, you don't really want these trees on fire. That, you know, all the leaves will be coming over and the branches. So they need to go. Yes, you can put a chimney cap on to stop sparks going up. Uh, but... No, they're better off down. And with all these storms, you know, we had Storm Jocelyn. You will have seen a video, if not, it's in my catalogue, uh, of the trees coming down around here. Uh, and it just made me believe how precarious my, my situation is. And in fact, I've done a video of one tree that did come down, but missed the house and missed the tent. Uh, and you can see that in the back catalogue too. So sorry for those who just tune in to see what's going on at the cottage. Nothing's going on at the cottage. Nothing at all. Um, but they will do soon. Um, but anyway, I hope I've encouraged some of you uh, to take fasting seriously, to embrace it. Um, also, to encourage you that, you know, it's not a waste of time. You're not doing it just to feel awful. You are actually advancing your spiritual journey if you do it uh, in the right spirit. Equally, I hope I haven't upset too many people who absolutely enjoy uh, showing pictures of their fasting and uh, their practices during uh, during Lent. I'm sorry about that if I have. Apologies. But anyway, that's enough of me for today. Um, lovely to see you all again. Um, I'm in good health, I think, and uh, so is Purdy, uh, my Labrador, and I hope to see you on the next video. Take care, all of you. God bless. Ah, <sighs> kippers for lunch.